Hey everyone, Dave here and welcome to Steam Link Overview. This was a surprise release only yesterday, but some people will treat it as a big deal and some not necessarily. Personally, to stream PC VR games, I'm using Virtual Desktop since few years already. It was always the superior option in terms of the graphics and performance altogether, though recently it's been running like Garbo and the recordings weren't the best either, which that's mostly what I care about nowadays, so let's see what's Valve cooking here. <laughs> So Steam Link is a streaming application where through the power of wireless connection you can access all your Steam VR games, directly inject them in your headset and enjoy your time. Everything today I'm gonna be pretty much directly referencing to Virtual Desktop and not Erlink since it's been running like ass since its release so I could care less about that. The setup is fairly simple because you just install the application, have Steam VR on your PC as well and then you just connect it through the code, then it's like a seamless transition to the Steam VR home every single time. We'll kinda have to split the overview in two because there's the gameplay and performance aspect and the recordings which I also look forward to. A small recap what was happening with Virtual Desktop is that I believe in the past two months something changed with the updates maybe or not, that the recordings on the edges have some blurriness going on and it's just not very nice to look at so every time I had to just punch in the clip to not have it visible at all though as you know I hate landscape perspective so that's kind of why you don't necessarily see PCVR content from me nowadays. From just one hour of light testing I found out the following stuff. Steam Link doesn't necessarily involve a lot of settings like there's like the big ones with modifiable bandwidth and the encoded video but nothing really specific it's just the main ones that you can have control over or just set everything to auto and not worry about playing with it around though for me as an enthusiast I like to have things in control and on the tiptoes so <laughs> virtual desktop definitely offers much more variety and you can figure out multiple setups depending on the game you play and the performance you want to have while in game there are some small stuff going on there's definitely some foveated rendering going on across the whole aspect of the application so every single game while editing i noticed some small audio like cracklings or disturbances and the image quality is i think just a uh, slightly worse just because you don't have that much control over the settings but besides that it runs pretty well and everything that i mentioned is very specific like you won't necessarily notice it while being in the mayhem of the combat or whatever's going on and it's kind of nitpicking because I notice it but most of the people probably won't though it is free so if you don't have virtual desktop then this is a nice solution to quickly get into the PC VR without fiddling with anything and then you find out yourself if you want to get deeper into it or just stay in the base level. In terms of the recordings Steam Link works wonderfully like you'll see there are no edges maybe the screen is shaking a little bit but that might be to the Quest 3 itself because I don't think I did a lot of PC VR footage on this headset yet so I have to play around with that more though it is a better solution because Virtual Desktop for some reason fucks it up so if I would have to record a Steam VR game nowadays then I would opt for that application and notice that I never mentioned the Rift games because <laughs> you can't access it at all which of course, it's a dedicated Valve application and I don't have that many games out there so it's just a very specific use maybe not necessarily for me but it's a nice other solution to the streaming besides Virtual Desktop and non-existent Erling. <laughs> Let's see how it looks in practice. So we just scan for the computer Okay, code. Oh, we're actually going to... Well, this is TVR. They're like on panel. Do we have some settings or like... And why it's so quiet. It also seems like it got updated because this panel was not like that before at all. 
Okay, so that's cool. At least Valve cares about that. <laughs> we can only access Steam VR games, which is not a surprise at all. I have only a couple, so that's kind of like the bad side of it, that you can't access the Rift versions, which for the most part is what I play. In terms of the VR settings, what do we have? We can set the refresh rate, resolution. I mean, we'll see with auto settings how it's going to be the performance, and then I'll try to customize something, I think. Even play area, okay. There's not that much. Oh, here we go. Target bandwidth. I think I'll just put some parameters that are very similar to what I have in virtual desktop and then I'll see what's happening. But to be fair, there's just not that much to offer in terms of the actual customization of the experience, like just some bandwidths and minor stuff that I guess for people who don't know how to do it, it's convenient. <laughs> Let's go with uh, Vertigo first. Uh, that's the new patch, I feel like. I need to still check it out. If I look at the environment, I have a favorite rendering going on, which I don't think I had that before in Virtual Desktop. So there's definitely some blurness going on when you move your head. It's not like insane compared to Stardom, but it's present, so for some people that might be not optimal. I went on the stage as kind of like performance heavy. How did I progress again? <laughs> I mean, I technically need to reach down there and I can't teleport. I forgot how to play this game. <laughs> The thing is that with the visuals, it really depends on your preference, cause... Like I said, there's this... ...fobiated running going on. Which is not that terrible. I don't think I noticed that big of a difference. When I'm like, busy playing a game. I mean, maybe in terms of details, it's not that sharp. What I was going again? I need to reach the army now. I don't know if I'll manage in time picking up gravitational waves all the way up here at HQ. We need a hurry or studies going down quick. It's more important she gets this alive, Brian. Close. However, during her course with enough velocity could... Brian! I'm just saying, we have options. In 
terms of the performance, I don't think I noticed. Anything like major. The stage is kind of trembling, but I think it's due to the stage itself. <laughs> Cut the naming. Now, what if we load, for example, to Alex? I didn't play this in like. Will it be three years? Did this game look that sharp before? Damn it was ahead of its time. Whoops. I think this was going toward the ending. I think those were grenades. How was I activating it? <laughs> My god. God damn. <laughs> I can't do the proper timing. There we go. Okay, well, I'm not going to do any spoilers because this is just the finish line. I was also tooling in the meantime with the advanced stuff and just more manual. But it seems like it's not that customizable as I would wish it to be. It's very much simplified if you're like a newbie to VR or PC VR in general. This is a great way to do it because you have everything ready 
you just worry about playing and that's all. Granted, this is only Steam VR stuff, so for me, there are maybe only three games that I would really play. And that's it. <laughs> because my library is not as big as the cross play one, no, cross buy between the Quest and Rift. It's cute that it straight up throws us into the Steam VR environment. But that's it, like, I don't see anything else happening. The performance is fine. The graphics, it depends because for me, it's okay. I will see the recordings because that's what I care mostly about. But there is a very slight forbidden reading going on, which enthusiasts will notice it. Maybe casual gamers, not so much. With the latency and all of that, it's all good. Like, it feels rather smooth. But again, this is only SteamVR library, which for some, it's fine. Not necessarily for me. <laughs> and I appreciate more settings going on in virtual desktop, although they got it the recording, so it's kind of 50-50 now. 